Hey, what is going on Guardians? Gray here with another Destiny 2 video. And in today's video, I finally did it. I decided to finally make my Ashen Wake video. I've been putting it off for a while because every time I went to do it, I just felt like it was missing one thing. And finally that piece fell into place and I was waiting for it to come. That's why I've been putting off this video. And today we're gonna talk about it and why I finally decided to dive into it the build I put together, and why I think it's so insanely powerful. So we're gonna get into it. If you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like below and consider hitting that subscribe button for me. I'll talk about it a little bit. I also wanna say, if you haven't seen my previous Sunbreaker video, be sure to go check that out. I talk a lot about the basics and the fundamentals of Sunbreaker. I've been playing this spec a lot and I really, really enjoy it. And Ashen Wake is kind of a different play style than playing with like Phoenix Cradle and the Sunspots and all that stuff, but it still has a lot of the same elements to it. So it's good to have an understanding of that. But with that being said, let's dive into what this build is all about and what you're gonna be trying to do when we pair it with the Traveler's Chosen Exotic Sidearm. If you guys saw my, pre my last video, I'm doing sort of a series of videos doing builds with this new Traveler's Chosen Exotic Sidearm. This thing is insanely powerful. I recently did a build video for Warlocks. This one's gonna be sort of my Titan build video. I have another one planned for Hunters as well. But a quick rundown, I won't do a full recap, but the Traveler's Chosen has the Gathering Light perk where each kill gives you stacks of Gathering Light and you can sort of cash in those stacks to get insane ability regen. If you get one kill and you cash in those stacks, you're gonna get almost half of your abilities back instantly. It's very, very powerful, and it really fills the gap with Ash and Wake for me. And I know that sounds kind of weird. I want to explain it a little bit. My biggest problem I've always had with Ash and Wake is I fully understand the power of it. We're going to take a look at it here. It has the Bring the Heat perk, where fusion grenades now explode directly on impact, and they gain increased throw speed. Final blows with your fusion grenades will give you grenade energy back. It's extremely powerful. It's going to, if you get a grenade kill inside of the crucible, it's going to give you your entire grenade back, which is extremely strong. I mean, you really can't underestimate how powerful that is. When you pair that with Middle Tree Sunbreaker and the Roaring Flames perk, it's extremely powerful. Each one of your solar ability kills will increase your damage for all of your solar abilities it's like a snowball effect so if you get that initial grenade kill it's actually going to give you enough damage to one shot anybody inside of the crucible with your fusion grenades so obviously that's insane i mean the ability to do one shot anyone inside of pvp is extremely powerful obviously this is destiny we have a lot of things that one shot people but having a grenade that one shots people and instantly regenerates when you pull that off is actually nuts. And there's been a lot of hype behind that Ash and Wake exotic lately. A lot of people are talking about it. You're seeing people like Mtash playing with it. And it's it's really fun. I mean, it's seriously, it can't be overstated enough how strong it is. But for me personally, every time I tried to play with it, the thing that sucked was that if you missed your grenade or you weren't able to pull it off, you were just kind of left with nothing. Your exotic was seemingly useless until you got your grenade back, which unless you spec into discipline, could be a while. You may not get your grenade back for well over a minute. And not that that's a bad thing, you can focus on your gunplay and all that, but if you're going with the Ash and Wake build, you're kind of playing into focusing on your grenades as much as possible. That's where the Traveler's Chosen sidearm comes into play with this build. It's just a really nice buffer in case you do miss a grenade, or sometimes if you trade, if someone's right on you, you throw the grenade and you die at the same time, it's not gonna give you your grenade back. It'll respawn you without it, even though you got the kill. So it's nice to be able to have that sidearm to be able to get your grenade back extremely quickly. It just adds more to that snowball effect and actually makes this build pretty damn viable in almost every situation. And having a sidearm is really nice because you really just gotta do the old pew pew and hit them once or twice chuck your nade at them and they'll die. And then once you get that ball rolling, then you have your one shot grenades. And it's so easy to just keep that going with the Traveler's Chosen sidearm. It's 
so powerful. And I know I kind of took my Ash and Wake video and my Traveler's Chosen build and shoved them together here, but they just fit together so nicely. It's a lot of fun. And of course, you know, I, I went and specced out, I went full ham with it and I'm running my charge with light stuff. You know, I got stacks on stacks, high energy fire and taking charge across all of my armor. So we're taking advantage of the charge with light damage buff inside of PVP. But we're also using solar plexus, which is extremely powerful with this build as well because we have that throwing hammer. The throwing hammer also has the capabilities of one-shotting people. If you can get two stacks of roaring flames, I believe that's strong enough to one-shot people with your throwing hammer. So you'll have your grenades going off, your hammer can one-shot people, and we're also using that enhanced ashes to assets so that you're getting insane super generation every time you get one of those grenade kills. And it just it becomes this beast of a build and it's really, really fun. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. I'm sure you can see some of the clips in the background of how powerful this is. I was using it in Iron Banner all week long, just capping some really fun gameplay. And it's perfect for game modes like that where there's a lot of targets. You can just run around and just be throwing grenades and going on a tear and you feel like a monster. And it's so much fun to have these ability focused builds inside of the Crucible. I was pairing the beloved sniper rifle with it. It just feels good. I've always wanted to try out that sniper sidearm play style, but I wanted to talk about something really quick that I actually saw Astacross talk about the other day. And it's this truth teller grenade launcher. I watched his video recently where he talks about this perk right here, disruption break where it says breaking an enemy's shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. Believe it or not, that actually works inside of PvP. So if you were to fire this grenade launcher and break their shield and swap to your sidearm, they're gonna take insane damage from your sidearm for a little while. And it pairs really nicely. It's a nice combo. You of course wanna do quick access sling as the mod, which will make your swap to the sidearm that much faster to clean up those kills but I watched his video on it the other day and immediately went to farm out one of these truth teller grenade launchers. I think I may do a video talking just all about this grenade launcher because it's very, very powerful. But if you have anything, really any special weapon with disruption break on it, it functions inside of PVP. And if you can break their shield with it, you'll get that bonus kinetic damage whenever you swap back to your kinetic weapon. And it's extremely strong, it almost, it's like a 50% damage buff. It will double, it will almost double the damage output of your kinetic weapon. So don't sleep on that. I was messing around with it. Again, extremely strong in those control environments where people are gonna be stacked up on the points. You can shoot a grenade and hit multiple targets and clean them up with a sidearm and it's super fun. So that's just a little recommendation you could pair with this. I still really enjoy the sniper gameplay with it. It kind of covers both ranges. You can be real up close. You have those grenades and your sidearm to cover your close range, and then you have the sniper for some of those more long range kills. So I hope you guys are enjoying the gameplay you see in the background. It's just me messing around in Iron Banner for the past week. It was a ton of fun doing this build, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. The Traveler's Chosen is nuts, and it's really gotten me into sidearms. I think I'm gonna be messing around with some other sidearms in the game, because I really, I really enjoy the play style, and some people hate it. Some people really can't stand sidearms, but I'm not even, I don't even play with controller. I play on PC and I've heard that sidearms are even stronger playing on controller. So I, I personally wouldn't know, but just on PC, my experience alone has been, it's very, very fun and I really enjoy the play style. So if you guys enjoyed the video, again, please leave a like below. It's a free way to support me, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button. It's a great way to help me out or to share this video with your friends, check out some of my other videos on the channel. Your time is greatly appreciated here on my channel. Thank you guys for stopping by the video. Let me know again what kind of builds you guys are coming up with with this Traveler's Chosen sidearm. It's a ton of fun and a good way to fill some of the time while we're waiting for Beyond Light in just a couple of months, guys. It's coming and it's gonna be nuts. Thank you guys for stopping by. Enjoy your day. Take care.